declare and decree that this day, Lord God, something good is on its way. We declare, Lord God, and on this day, Lord God, provision is already done. That you give seed to the soul and bread to eat. We thank you for giving us this day our daily bread. Father, there's someone in need for a word from you. I declare that word comes. I declare, Lord God, clarity comes. I declare that their minds be at rest. Their minds be at peace. They don't stress, but they bless you, Father. We don't give praises unto the enemy with worry, but we give praises unto you. We're saying that our story is being rewritten right now. That, Lord God, who begin a good work shall complete it unto the end. Lord God, I declare that this is the season of change. You're moving from out of pain, from moving out of despair, but moving into that place of rest. I declare rest in someone's life, Lord God. Rest to become rest to Lord God to not stress. Rest from the restlessness they've been receiving from the cares of this world. Lord God, the, this world has no authority upon us. The enemy has no authority upon us. We are the children of the Most High God. And as children, Lord God, you are a good father. And as that good father, you said the provision is already there. We don't have to worry about what we should eat, drink, or what we should put on. You know we stand in need for these things. So Lord God, our mind is shifting that we are kingdom citizens, ambassadors here upon earth. And everything we need, you have already placed here. Everything that our hearts desire. You say, if we diligently seek after you, you shall give us the desires of our heart. And we thank you for the heart transplant. We thank you, Lord God, that even physical, if someone's having issues with their heart, I declare <clears throat> healing right now for their heart. I declare in the spirit. Lord God, that stony heart is being lifted up right now that you've given them a heart of flesh, a heart that's after you, a heart that's beating for the things of God in this season. Lord, we praise you today. We magnify you. We exalt you just for being our Lord. We don't care what doubters say. We don't care what unbelievers say. We don't care what the atheists say. For we have seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We've seen, Lord God, your hand upon us. We have heard your voice. We have heard you call unto us. And we stand fast in the things of God. We will be not moved by circumstances or situations. We will not be moved by the cares of this world, but we cast our cares upon you. In Jesus' name, listen, <clears throat> good morning. I thank you for tapping that screen as you're coming in. Thank you for hitting the share button. Arise, shine, for this is your time. This is the day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because we have breath. If you got breath, you got life. If you got life, that means you still got an opportunity to complete your assignment. Um, thank you once again for joining and listen. Um, I'm in the teaching or the devotion on speaking on I must confess. Uh, I must confess. Uh, the first day I was speaking on making the confession in order to be redeemed, um, that you are no longer under bondage. The Bible says, if you confess your faults, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That was the confession that, that we needed to make in order that nothing's blocking us, nothing is holding us up, nothing is restraining us. Your sins are forgiven. Um, as he says in Romans, he says, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, Jesus Lord, you shall be saved. This is not a work method, but this is the way that God has allowed us to come back into the fold by making a confession. I want to say to you that out of your mouth shall flow blessings, uh, not curses. The Bible declares and says death and life are in the power of the tongue and that who love it shall eat the fruits thereof. What fruits are you eating in this season? What fruits do you desire to be eaten? Some of us have been eating sour grapes and that's why our face has been swollen up and our, um, our, our whole uh, mannerisms 
is sad and and we have this complacency about us because we've been speaking and saying the wrong things there's someone out there who has uh either is you or has the friend that says it's always something um the friend or is it you who always is complaining about this situation instead of giving god praise about the situation about to turn around so you stay where you at on the words that you release in the atmosphere see these words are out there waiting um things the angelic angels are out there waiting hearkening to the voice of the lord or what are you saying um, the frequency that you're speaking in the atmosphere, the life that you've been living in. And I want to have this moment in time for the uh, foundation scripture. Listen, um, King David in 1 Samuel chapter, uh, hallelujah, chapter 17, starting at verse 45. Then David, then, then say David to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword. And with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts and, and the God of armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. Mm. Understand that David is speaking, he's making the he's saying something, he's out of his mouth speaking. Listen to what he says This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and make thou head from thee. And I will give thy corpus up to the host of Philistines, and this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know there is a God of Israel. Listen to me, people of God. As the man of God, David, at a small young age, had the confidence, he had the the, the insurance to speak something from his mouth. Um, he, he, he confessed what was about to happen. Um, he made it very plain and clear. This is what's going to happen. What gave him that bonus? Because he knew who he belonged to. He understand that Goliath uh, was not part of this covenant. He didn't have a covenant with the Lord. And the Lord reassured him uh, that victory was already his. And so therefore, that's why he was able to speak. He was anointed to not lose. He was anointed to win. And I'm saying to someone that you have that same anointing and grace. See, the Spirit of God came upon David um, and anointed him to be the king at a later time. But now you have that same Spirit dwelling in the inside of you. Um, you have that same authority dwelling in the inside of you. So when you speak, your words carry weight in the spirit. Hear what I'm saying? When you speak and declare a thing, when you saying things, you have to make sure that you're guarding your mouth and that you're speaking the right things. Uh, what do you want to claim? David in his passions claimed victory. He told exactly what was about to happen. And looking at his um, physical status, you would say that's not going to happen. Some people may look at you and say, well, how are you going to beat anything? Some people People may hold you to your past and say, oh, you've tried that before, but it didn't work. Some people may hold you to the past and say, the family that you connected to, how can you leave a legacy? I know who your father is. I know who your mother is. I know what your past is. But listen, that past does not define you because the words that you speak is about to elevate you because God has given you the grace to speak into existence that which needs to be. You said, man of God, I do speak. And yes, we do speak things, but thank God for uh, the grace that he gives us. That's why he says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You have to build up the capacity. You have to build up the certainty of you believe in God. You believe in Jesus as you believe in he who created you. And you have more confidence in he who created you than you have in the words that the devil is speaking to you. Uh, some of us put more faith in that which the devil says. Even when the devil doesn't have no Bible, uh, but we listen to his words in our mind. And we speak the wrong words more than we speak the right words. Um, you, you spoke more of uh, it's always something that you says I'm more than an overcomer. Do you hear what I'm saying? You spoke more in the atmosphere uh, that uh, uh, my sickness or I, I, um, this sickness flows in my family. 
And so that thing has always brought restraints. This thing has always brought a limitation in your life. Um, but how do we lift up out of limitation? Uh, we speak the words of elevation. We speak the word of God in the circumstance. Um, see, the Israel armies uh, was looking at Goliath and Goliath was speaking. Um, he was cursing. Um, he was intimidating them and they was fearful. Uh, what does the Bible say? The Bible class says, I have not given you a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore, if the words and certain anxieties and depression start to come to your mind, you say, no, that's not my portion. I'm not bipolar. I'm single minded in Christ. Uh, when words of, of doubt and uncertainty uh, comes to speak to you and saying, how are you going to make it this time? You say, well, God always makes a way out of no way. And you say and you speak in the atmosphere. I remember. Uh, that the Lord healed me um, years ago. I remember when I didn't know how I was going to pay for certain things, but God made provision. I didn't know how I was going to get a job that I wasn't qualified, but I was desperate and I needed a job. And I declared that this job is mine and God opens up a door. Uh, if you look at the word of God in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, uh, what he tells us to, he said, Whatsoever thing you act for when you pray, believe that you receive. Well, see, we're asking and we shall receive. That's the confession that you're speaking. So as David is speaking, he's saying, I'm going to cut your head off. I'm going to uh, 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 give your, your body to the birds. The bone that he had in him to speak those words. Um, came from within him. The spirit of God was prompting him. Um, so you have to be a little bit uh, out of your mind. You can't have this. Uh, I know we have a lot of analytical people. And we're going to wonder how how is this supposed to work? Uh, God says, confess it. Can I show you something? In the book of Genesis. Hallelujah. In the book of Genesis, um, our father who we are made in the image and likeness. No, we're not God, but we're the image. We have uh, the ability uh, to do and, and be imitators as our father. As a child imitates their dad and mom, we can imitate what the Lord has done. What did he say? He said in the beginning, he spoke it into existence. Um, what happens is, and when we line up with the structure of the Lord, the Lord says, call those things that be not as though they were. He didn't say, call those things that be as they be. No, he said, call those things that be not. So it's something that's not, but it needs to be. It needs to change. And as you say the words, as the Lord said, he said, let there be light. I want you to speak. Let there be light. Where there's darkness in your life, let there be life. Let it be a shift. Uh, where the earth was full of void, where there was great darkness, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, was hovering over the face of the earth. And when the Lord released the words, the Holy Spirit moved. Let me say, when you release your words, the right words, God's words, the Holy Spirit moves, the angels of the Lord move. When you line up according to what the word says about the situation, things change. He said that you can speak unto the mountain and say be casted up and moved to the sea. He said as Jesus did while they was going to the other side. Listen when they was going to the other side the storm came. Is there a storm in your life? Is there things that's not going right in your life this morning? Um, Jesus was in the ship resting. Uh huh. But why? Because Jesus has already spoke a word. Now, listen, don't give me that. This is Jesus. If Jesus said the works I do and even greater should you do, it's a reprogramming of the mind of who you are. And as Jesus said, as we're going to go to the other side, um, the disciples um, didn't catch that. Uh, they were looking at the situation, the circumstance, and they came to Jesus as he's resting below and says, Lord, do you not care that we're about to perish? Jesus woke up from his sleep 
and rebuke the wind and rebuke the storm. It said, peace, be still. Listen carefully. The cares of the life is going to try us. It, it's going to try to come to see the word that's in you. To try to get you to move out of what God said to you. Understand these things are coming not to destroy you, but to sharpen you. For you could say, ha, mm -mm, I didn't handle that the right way. I didn't speak the right words over that situation. Oh, yesterday was a day of, of mentally things trying to come and, and, and trying to dictate to me this situation. Oh, yesterday was a day. And you might have had that kind of day. Uh sometime this week or last week but let me say I just kept speaking what the word says in the atmosphere and then I got together with some brothers and sisters and we all uh, seemed like it was some type of uh, um, whole strongholds and situations going on but as we came together we prayed, we break down that hole. Uh, that's why the enemy doesn't want you to agree. That's why he doesn't want you to speak the words and confess what God says. He doesn't want the believer to pray. That's why he always attacks prayer. Um, every time you're about to pray, you get sleepy, you get tired, but you can watch Netflix for three hours. Uh, you can watch movies, you can stroll for hours, but when it's time to pray, you get tired and sleepy. Who, 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 where do you think that's coming from? When it's time to read the word and get empowered uh, through the word of God, now you're getting tired. Um, those who be at church, it goes on more than an hour ahead. You start looking at your watch. Where is that coming from? Mm -mm. Because you need the fuel. You need the right substance, which is the word of God that brings things alive in you. And as it brings it alive, then you can speak it and release it. You can release declarations, decree. The Bible says you should decree a thing. Um, I'm, I'm giving you authorization because in the beginning, he says, I've given you dominion. I've given you the ability to be fruitful and multiply. I have dominion here upon earth. Um, and as in your space, the enemy has no right. In your house, the enemy has no right. In your body, the enemy has no right. In your finances, the enemy has no right. So therefore, you have the authority. Whatever is lawful in heaven, you have the authorization to speak. There's no property. There's no sickness in heaven. So anything that's not going against the authorization in heaven here on earth, you have the right to speak it. And call those things as it is in heaven. Let it be also in earth. We're not trying to get to heaven and bring earth up to heaven. No, we're trying to bring heaven down to earth. He says create on earth as it is in heaven. And so right now, we want to declare. We want to agree. We want to speak. We want to call those things in the existence from the heaven realms into the earthly realms. So anything that's blocking, anything's holding up, you have the authorization to say, hold up, stop. You have no authorization in my life. You have no right in my life. If a door that was opened by things that you done, by words that you said, we uplift and we cultivate that ground, the atmosphere of your home. You take dominion, you take authority back over it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me show you something. Do you remember John's father? John the Baptist's father. Um, when the angel of the Lord came and gave him a word that your son was going to be the one who's going to pave the way for the Messiah. Uh, John started to speak um, the wrong thing. How is this going to be? Um, my wife is old and I am old. Um, he wasn't saying nothing but the facts. He wasn't wrong. But guess what? The, the angel of the Lord had to shut his mouth because he would have aborted the situation. See, that's why the angel had to shut his mouth because he was about to curse that which God was about to happen because God needs the authorization from men to be able to operate in this land. Um, he doesn't do anything. He can, but the authorization that he's given us is for us to speak, for us to move, for us to subdue, for us to take control. Are you hearing me out there? So when the, when the angel had to shut his mouth, um, until the nine months was completed. Um, um, they came to the mother, Elizabeth, and, and said, what are we going to name him? 
and the father could not speak um, because listen the destiny of that child was in his name and I want you to be mindful of the name that somebody's giving you um, so what happened was he said no he wrote out he said his name is John and immediately his mouth opened up I want you to say this uh, that I'm, my life is not determined on what somebody else is calling me um, somebody may be calling you um, lazy or, or somebody may be calling you uh, uh, somebody may be calling you something that you're not because they don't see the vision they don't see what God has said they they saying and, and can, trying to put you back in that same place or where you used to be but I want you to speak into your destiny I want you to speak you have the authority and power um, people may have said words to you that cut you uh, said words to you that brought you in a place of stagnation um, they said things that that you took hold of but I want you to uplift those words and say that's not my portion any longer. You may have said words, I'm always broke. No, that's not your portion any longer. You may say, you might be one of the ones who said it's always something. You may be the one who more so dictate of the circumstance instead of speaking what the Lord says. I want you to shut your mouth on those things and shut their mouth. And tell them, I don't receive that what you're saying to me. Unfortunately, you may have had a parent who says you're like your father. You may have had a parent or a loved one or people who around you say you're not going to amount to anything. I'm going to say that you will thrive. I'm going to say that you will survive. I'm going to say and speak into your life. There's more to you than what they have spoken over you. And I'm speaking that there's going to be a name shift in the spirit. No longer are you operating under that old name that brought reproach and shame. No longer are you operating in our old name. But we're going to make a confession. We're going to speak and change to a new direction, to a new place, to a new order, to a new structure in our life. We're going to call those things that be not as though they are. They are in the spirit. That's why the Lord says call and call those things that be not as though they are. Um, there's a name. You are that David in the spirit. You are that Moses in the spirit. Yes, men and women of God are fault, but nevertheless, God used them and God had a God had a place for them in history. God took God took people who on this day wouldn't line up. See, the reason why we can accept Moses is because God had put the grace upon him. God had validated him. Well, you can accept David because God validated him. You can accept Peter because God validated You can accept Paul, but you see the faults. You see their errors. <laughs> and, and though you may be in that place where you have your faults and errors, but God changed their story. I'm speaking that God's going to change your story. Um, Saul became Paul. A um, man who was persecuting the church. Um, and then the word was spoken that he was going to be one who was going to start structuring the church for the Gentiles. He gave the message of grace. I'm speaking grace is in your life that your story is changing. As you make the confession, what do you desire and what you want to see? As David did, he spoke unto that situation, that giant. What's that giant in your life? What has been tormenting you? What has been chastising you? You have the authority that you can confess that you're moving from that. You can confess that the victory is already yours. You can confess that every enemy that has mounted up against you shall bow down to the name that's above all name. And you have been given authorization in the name of Jesus, amen.
So I want you to think, what's that confession? What do you need to speak? What you need to say is we about to pray and agree on the same on the same accord. I want you to get those hearts up for me, those who share. Thank you for sharing because we're about to pray and about to go to a place where we're coming in agreement against everything that has been opposing us. What's the opposition that you've been facing? What's the thing that's been going coming against you? We're about to uplift these things. What's the shift that you need in your name? So get your mind in that place and say, Lord, I'm coming in agreement to this. I'm, I'm coming in agreement with the man of God this morning that things are not going to stay the same in my life. I'm, I'm making the right confession. And as you make the right confession, the blessing will be released. Did you notice that anytime a blessing was being transferred to another uh, child, from, from the father to a child, he spoke words. He didn't give them nothing tangible. Uh, sometimes later they may have received something, but most of those who received a blessing received words. Uh, I like the, the Lord says, forget not your Lord, your God who gives you the ability and power um, to attain wealth. He said that he may establish his covenant. Um, he's a covenant keeping God. And as the fathers will lay their hands and speak a word over their child, the firstborn or secondborn or whatever, it, whoever it was, uh, they will speak a blessing and release it. Um, so much that Jacob just received words, but Esau was so mad because he didn't receive that same blessing. It was just words. No, it's not just words. It's covenant words from the Father. I'm saying that you have words that the Lord wants to speak over you, that he's spoken over you, and those words should not come back void. Do you hear what I'm saying? Don't just say they're just words. No, they're more than words. They carry. Uh, you ever come into a place at the argument and, and you say, hey, what's the matter? Matter is substance. That's why we say, what's the matter? Because you can feel the tension. You can feel that something not that's not right. Um, even though you didn't see the argument that happened, but you can feel it. Uh, because words produce substance. Over here, words produce substance. And that's why I want you to know that you're about to shift in your life. It's coming to life. Father, I thank you now that those who are on the sound of my voice, that we are bringing forth a shift in our life. As King David did, he spoke the words into the atmosphere of what was about to transpire. I speak what's about to transpire on those who are under my voice right now, that there is a mighty deliverance happening right now that the enemies the adversaries that has been plaguing them that has been taunting them that they're about to come down lord god i'm speaking to the life in their life i'm speaking to the mountains in their life that has brought lord god stagnation has brought lord god, frustration whatever that mountain and whatever that goliath is we call them down. We cast them up. We break the holes. We cut the heads off at the head. We cut it off at the root. Therefore, it can no longer produce the wrong fruit. Right now, I'm speaking to someone who's been engaging with the wrong thing for years and years. Uh, I'm speaking that that situation no longer will bring tears. I'm speaking that their mind is set free from anxiety and depression. Um, I'm speaking right now and I'm confessing that the goodness of the Lord is flowing in their life. I'm speaking in their life that they were receiving the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I'm coming into agreement with my brother, with my sister. No longer will they hold on. No longer will that stronghold bound them. No longer will they be in a place of uncertainty. But I'm speaking in there. They have clarity. Clarity in their mind. Clarity in their head. I'm speaking, Lord God, that the engagements, Lord God, that never seem to go through, that it should go through this season. I'm speaking life in every dead situation. I'm speaking to those dry bones in their life that as we confess that we are the head and not the tail above only not beneath. Uh, that we are the shepherd. We are the sheep of the shepherd of the most high God and he's leading us. He 
gifts, allowing us to lay down in green pastures. I'm speaking that their dry season is now over. I'm speaking that those who have been in the valley of the shadow of death, that they are moving out of the valley and they're moving to the mountaintop, that they will possess that which you have said and given unto. I'm speaking to those who have been weary, who's been frustrated. And I'm saying that your word declares, do not be weary in well-doing for you shall reap in due season. I speak a due season in this year. I'm speaking no more of the tears in the same circumstances plaguing in their family. Those demons, those devils, those Goliaths that has been trying their life too long, who's been placed in their life to bring frustration. We speak against every force that is not of the Lord right now will be uplifted. We bring it to a heart. The stormy weathers right now, the rain has poured, but now we will appreciate the sun coming out for who the sun sets free is made free indeed. We speak unto those who are under the covenant authority right now. These are your sons. These are your daughters. Father, I'm speaking unto their death destiny, not to their past, that you are leading them to a place where they shall be in plenty, no longer limited. I'm speaking against the forces that has brought them into a worry, into a place of hunger, and a place of sadness. No, I speak the goodness of the Lord in their life. I'm speaking the joy of the Lord. I'm speaking the presence of God tangible in their life. They've been sensing the presence of evil too long. They've been sensing the presence of stagnation too long. And that is not their portion. I speak. They have the portion in the presence of the Lord. There's fullness of joy. And in the right hand's pleasures forevermore. Father, I'm coming to you in agreement with my brother and my sister that we will guard our mouth um, we will not speak the wrong things over our life any longer we will not curse that which you have blessed um, we will not hold up i'm um, saying the wrong things out of our mouth any longer we will not bring hindrance in our families hindrance in our marriage hindrance over our children by speaking the wrong thing but we will speak Life, We will speak life, not death. We're changing our stories by calling those things that be not as though they were. So we speak health right now. I'm speaking to that body that's ailing with that sickness. Sickness, you must go. We curse you at the root right now. The mind that's been troubled. I speak peace. Anxiety, fear, depression, you leave. Um, cancer, you leave. High blood pressure, diabetes, leave. There's authority in our words. And I speak wholeness into the body. Jesus asked the question, will that be made whole? I'm speaking wholeness right now. Wholeness right now. If they're a portion. We are coming into agreement with wholeness. Um, we will no longer just get a partial breakthrough but we're coming all the way through whenever jesus stepped in they was made completely whole when jesus came through lights were changing so that same jesus the same authority the same spirit right now is moving holy spirit move right now in their life move over that situation as you did in the beginning when the lord released his words you moved holy spirit move right now breathe a freshness on them breathe a newness restore the things that's been broken restore the things that's been out of place restore the things that's been captured by the enemy um, res restoration restitution your redeem i'm speaking your story has been changed and shifted as you come into agreement things are moving right now things are moving in the spirit as we let go of the old words that we speak we uplift and uproot every word of condemnation conviction that we said of doubt that we said we will prosper we will be in good health we shall be that which god has called us to be we call ministry 
ministries in line with calling families in line with calling our destinies and purpose in line whatever that is that has been out of line I want you to come call it and make the confession that is coming in line right now my mind is coming in line my body is coming in line I'm calling those things into line right now I'm calling that I'm the head I'm calling that I have victory I'm calling right now um, that which belongs to me um, go back and do it again you start that business you start your ministry you start that what God has said to you whatever it is that you were starting to do but you stop um, don't be concerned about the money God says go and do it and I'm going to open up doors for you Amen. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're making confessions. What is it that you want to see shift and change? What is it that you want to see shift and change? Confess it. We confess and said, Lord, we, we, where we missed it at, we, we, when we spoke the wrong things, what, where we entangled ourselves with, Lord, we uproot that right now. I, I was speaking the wrong things over my life and my family life, and now I'm shifting and saying the right things. We don't walk by the senses, but we walk by faith. And so that's why God has authorized us to say and speak and declare. Because as you walk and say the right things, when you say what the word says, it moves you and catapults you into positions and places where you need to be. Yes, faith without works is dead, but you have to make the confession. We're dealing with the spiritual realm of things. Everything that was created was created for that which is not seen. So you can't see your words, but your words are even elevating you or your words are even bounding you. Mm. We're not going to no longer be bound by the words of what someone else spoke. The curses that someone else spoke. A curse without a cause cannot stay. Meaning if it doesn't have no right to be in your life, then you uplift it by speaking against it. Um. If your father, your mother, someone has spoke something, you just say, Lord, I forgive them. Mm -hmm. No, no, don't retaliate. Don't say you spoke this. You didn't know. No, 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 no. I forgive you, mom. I forgive you, dad. I forgive you, brother, sister. I let it go. And that longer, it has no weapon. It has no, no authority because God says, vengeance is mine. I will restore. I still... I still honor you, Mom. I still honor you, Dad. Um, you know, you, you can have a distance. No way says you, you have to be in that place, not saying space, but in the spirit, we release it. Um, um, I, I no longer hold on to these things of old. I release them unto you, Lord. I'm making a confession that I'm not what they say that I am.